Just last week, one of our Discord members shared an amazing website that had also featured on awards as an honorable mention back in May. Not sure how I missed it earlier, but I have to say, it's really well put together. Both the design and the interactive animations are super clean and thoughtful. One of the animations that stood out and something I've seen used on quite a few award-winning sites was this image gallery with 3D motion triggered by scroll. It's an animation that's been popular for a while now and I felt it deserved a dedicated video. So after spending a few hours on it, I put together this minimal scroll experience with the same 3D gallery animation built entirely using GSAP and scroll trigger. To give it a bit of narrative flow, I also added a text transition, the intro title animates out word by word and when the cover image scales in, a new title fades in, also word by word using split text. In this video, I'll walk you through how to create this full scroll experience using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GSAP and scroll trigger. If you find this helpful, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. For those who are interested, I've also created a Next.js version of this build which is available to the pro members. Alright, let's get into the code. Let's start by setting up the basic structure. I'll begin by creating three sections, an intro section, a spotlight section which will hold all the animations and an outro section. Inside both the intro and outro sections, I'll add an H1. This just gives each frame a little context so the page doesn't feel empty while scrolling. Next, we'll move on to the spotlight section. This is where all the animation happens and we'll need four elements inside it. First, a container to hold all the gallery images. I'm calling this one Spotlight Images. Then, a wrapper for the final cover image that appears at the end, named Spotlight Cover Image. And finally, two separate headers, one for the intro title and one for the outro. These will animate in and out during the scroll. Now, inside the Spotlight Images container, I'll use Emmet Shorthand to quickly generate tentatives with the class image, each one holding an image. We could have created this dynamically using JavaScript, but for today's video, we'll keep it static so we can focus entirely on the animation logic. Then, inside the Spotlight Cover Image container, I'll add one final image. This is the hero image that scales in toward the end of the sequence. And just like before, I'll drop in an H1 tag inside both the intro and outro headers. We'll animate these using split text to create word by word transitions. That's pretty much it for the HTML structure. Next, we'll move on to styling it with CSS. First, I'm importing a Google font called Instrument Serif. It has a tall, elegant look that I think looks really well for such editorial headline focused layouts. Next, I'm setting up two color variables, one for the light background and one for dark shade that we'll use for the sections. These two colors will form the base of our contrast throughout the scroll. Then I'll do a quick reset, removing all default margins and paddings and setting the box model to make layout sizing easier to manage. For the body, I'm applying the font we just imported so it reflects across the entire layout. Images are styled to fully cover their containers, both in width and height, without stretching or distorting. We'll rely on this to keep the gallery layout sharp and consistent. Now for the main titles, I'm styling all the H1s to be large, bold and tightly spaced. This helps each line of text feel strong and cinematic, especially as it transitions in and out. Each section on the page takes up the full height and width of the viewport. I'm also adding padding and hiding overflow. This gives us room to work with when layering and animating elements later on. For the intro and outro sections, I'm using Flexbox to center everything both vertically and horizontally. The background here is light and the text color is dark which gives us a nice contrast from the spotlight section in between. Inside these sections, I'm keeping the width of the title limited to about half the screen that just makes it easier to read and keeps the visual layout clean. Now let's style the spotlight section. This one uses a dark background with light color text. It acts as the main stage for our animation. Both the image container and the cover image are positioned absolutely, filling the entire screen. They use a three-dimensional transform style and a perspective value to help create that deep layered scroll motion. Each individual image is also absolutely positioned they start from the center of the screen and are pulled backward in space. This is what lets us animate them forward in 3D as we scroll. The images also have a will change applied which gives us better performance during transforms. 
Same thing goes for the cover image. We want it to scale in smoothly later in the scroll sequence, so we prep it for that here. Next, I am positioning the two animated headers, the intro title and the outro title. Both are centered, just like the images, and set to half the width of the screen. The intro header sits just below the image layer and the outro header is placed above it. We'll use this stacking to handle the word by word fade in and fade out during scroll. Finally, I'm adding a media query for smaller screens. On mobile, we expand the width of the headers and add some extra padding. This keeps the text looking clean and readable even on narrow layouts. That's it for the CSS setup. Now that we have styled the structure, we'll move on to the JavaScript and set up the animation logic. Let's start by importing everything we are going to need for this animation. First, I'm importing GSAP. This is the main animation library we'll use to handle all the scroll based motion. Next, I'm importing scroll trigger. This will let us link our animations directly to the scroll progress on the page. We'll also bring in split text. This one lets us break any line of text into words or characters so we can animate them individually. We'll use this later for the word by word fade effect on the intro and outro titles. And finally, I'm importing Lenis, a lightweight smooth scrolling library. We'll use it to replace the browser's default scroll behavior with a more fluid, eased version which feels much better for these kind of scroll interactions. Now once the DOM is fully loaded, I'm calling a function. This waits for the entire HTML structure to be ready before we run any code. Inside it, the first thing I'll do is register both scroll trigger and split text with GSAP. We have to register plugins like this before we can use them in our animations. Then I'll set up Lenis. For this part, I am just pasting in a short block of code from the Lenis documentation. It's the same setup I've used in almost every scroll based animation video. What this does is connect Lenis with scroll trigger. Normally, scroll trigger listens for native scroll events, but now that we are using a custom scroll engine, we have to manually tell scroll trigger to update every time Lenis scrolls. Once Lenis is fully set up, I'm calling a function called init spotlight animations. This will hold all of our scroll linked animations and we'll write that part next. I'm also adding an event listener so that every time the window is resized, the same function runs again. This will help keep the animation responsive across different screen sizes. Now inside that animation function, the first thing I'll do is grab some DOM elements we'll be animating. I'm selecting all the image elements inside our spotlight section, then the final cover image that scales in at the end and both the headers one for the intro title and one for the outro. After that, I am declaring two variables to store the split text instances. Let's start by splitting the intro header. I'll use split text to break it into individual words. This will let us animate each word's opacity one by one. Then, I'm just making sure all the words to be fully visible at the beginning. Next, I am splitting the outro header the same way also by words, but this time I am setting their opacity to zero right away, so they stay hidden until we are ready to reveal them during the final part of the scroll. I am also keeping the parent h1 visible, so the words inside it are ready to animate when we need them. That's our initial setup. Next, we'll define the scatter animation logic and how images move in 3D as we scroll. I'll start by creating a list of direction vectors. This is an array of objects where each item contains an x and y value and these values determine the direction in which that specific image will travel. We are going to use this to scatter the images outward from the center. So instead of all the images just flying forward in the same line, each one will move in its own unique direction, slightly left, right, up or down. This gives us a more organic cinematic breakup effect we are aiming for. We'll use these direction values later when we calculate the final x and y position of each image. Now I'll grab the width and height of the screen. We'll need these to scale our scatter distances depending on the screen size. Then I'm checking if the screen width is below a thousand pixels. This is just a quick way to detect mobile. If we are on mobile, we'll push the images out much farther because the screen is smaller and we want to make sure the motion still feels dramatic. For desktop, we'll keep the spacing tighter so the layout stays controlled and doesn't feel too chaotic. Next, I'll define the starting positions for all the images. All of them begin at the center of the screen, pulled far back along the z-axis, so they are deep in the background and scale down to zero. That way, when the scroll begins, they feel like they are emerging from a distant point. Then I'll define the end positions. This is where each image will move to as we scroll. 
To do that, I'll multiply each direction vector by the screen width and height, as well as the scatter multiplier we just set based on device type. This gives each image a custom destination point in 3D space. I am also setting the Z position to a large position value. This will bring the images closer to the window. And I am scaling them up to full size so they appear completely on screen. Now I loop through each image and apply the initial position using GSAP. This places all the images at the center, pulled far back and invisible at first. They'll animate into place as we scroll. Finally, I am also setting the starting position of the cover image. This is the image that scales in at the very end. Same thing here, pushed back in 3D space, scaled to zero and centered. Alright, now that all the positions are ready, next, we'll move on to the scroll trigger setup and start connecting this to the scroll progress. Here, I am creating a scroll trigger instance that connects the animation to scroll progress on the spotlight section. I will start by defining the trigger. This just tells scroll trigger which section we are watching. Then, I am setting the start point at the very top of the section and I am giving it a custom scroll range that's 15 times the height of the screen. That gives us enough scroll space to animate the full sequence without rushing through it. Next. I am pinning the section in place, that means the spotlight section stays fixed on screen while we scroll through it and everything inside it animates as we move. Pin spacing is turned on, that just means the layout below it won't jump or collapse while it's pinned. Scrub is set to 1, which means the animation is tied smoothly to scroll progress with a bit of easing to keep it fluid. Now inside the onUpdate callback function, we get access to the current scroll progress. This gives us a value between 0 and 1, where 0 is start of the scroll and 1 is the very end. We'll use this value to drive all our 3D transforms in real time. Next, I'm looping through every image in the gallery. For each image, I'm calculating a staggered delay. This just adds a small offset, so the images don't all animate at once. Then, I check if we are on mobile. If we are, I use a larger scale multiplier, so the images zoom more dramatically. On desktop, I keep it slightly more subtle. Now, I'll calculate the scroll progress for each image individually. I'm subtracting the stagger delay from the global progress and multiplying it to exaggerate the motion. This gives us a slightly layered cascading effect. Next, I pull in the image's start and end positions. These were the ones we defined earlier, deep in the center and far out in 3D space. Then I interpolate between those values based on scroll progress, x, y, z and scale. Everything up. Finally, I use GSAP's set method to apply the new transform values to each image. This moves them forward in space, scales them up, and scatters them outward, all based on how far we are scrolled. Now, after animating the images, We'll also bring in the final cover image. To do that, I start by calculating a separate scroll range. This one kicks in later, starting around 70% into the scroll. I compute the Z position and scale using the same technique, interpolating from deep background to full size at the center. And then I apply those values to the cover image. This creates that final reveal moment, where the scattered images fall away and the cover image takes over. That wraps up the scroll driven animation for the gallery and cover. Next, we'll animate the intro and outro text headers word by word as part of the final transition. Let's start with the intro header, the one that appears at the start of the spotlight section. First, I'm checking to make sure that the split text instance exists and that it actually contains words we can animate. Then, I define a scroll range between 60 and 75% of the scroll. This is where the intro title will fade away word by word as we move forward. Inside that range, I calculate the fade progress by normalizing the scroll value. So at 60% of scroll, we are at 0 and at 75%, we are at 1. This gives us a smooth curve to work with. Next, I grab the total number of words in the intro title and loop through each word individually. For each word, I figure out how far into the scroll sequence it is based on its index and compare that to the current scroll progress. Now here is the logic. If we are scrolled far enough past a word, I'll set its opacity to 0. If we haven't reached that word yet, I'll leave it fully visible. And if we are right in the middle, I calculate a smooth fade using linear interpolation, so the opacity gradually drops from 1 to 0 as the scroll moves forward. Outside that scroll range, I am handling some edge cases too. If we are before the fade out begins, all the words stay fully visible. If we scroll past the range, they are all hidden. 
This gives us a nice staggered word by word fade as the images start to break apart. Next, we'll animate the outro header which fades in toward the very end of the scroll. The logic here is almost identical, just flipped in reverse. This time, I'm setting the scroll range between 80 and 95%. That's where we want the outro title to appear, word by word, as the scattered images fade away and the cover image takes over. So, again I calculate progress, normalize it and loop through each word in the outro sentence. For each word, I check where we are in the scroll and apply the fade accordingly. If we are past a word's fade in point, I'll set it to fully visible. If we haven't reached that word yet, I'll keep it hidden. And in between, I calculate partial opacity based on how far we are into the fade window. And just like before, I'm handling the cases outside the scroll range. Before the fade starts, all the words are hidden. Once we are past the end, all of them are fully visible. This creates a clean handoff. The intro text fades out in sync with the image scatter and the outro text fades in just as the cover image takes over. That's it for the full animation sequence. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.